Hello, welcome to another Return to the Square Theatre podcast. My guest this week is the delightful and witty Carrie Lloyd, who I think is going to be a huge star in the future. She's already a pretty big star as it is. Um, I'm now on tour, so uh, it's uh, come and see me if you like with my show Happy Now. There's some of the subjects uh, in it. <laughs> um, there may be more. That's quite an old bit of stuff on the wall there. Um, I am at the Leicester Square Theatre from the 11th to the 13th of February. Uh, all of those are selling pretty well. The 11th still has uh, quite a few tickets left, I think, as I speak. But uh, the other two look like they're going to sell out. So be quick if you want to see those. Uh, and then I'm coming to uh, Sheffield, Leeds, Liverpool and Salford. Salford is already sold out. And Leeds is very close. And Liverpool and Sheffield just have some tickets up in the balcony as I speak. Um, the whole tour seems to be selling pretty well. Um, Reading's already sold out. And there's lots that are very close, including Bristol and Norwich, Aldershot, uh, Swindon, quite a few of them. Uh, so go to richardherring.com slash happy underscore now slash tour and you can see all of the tour dates. Uh, the Bloomsbury dates at the end have been cancelled because the theatre has asbestos in it and is not going to be open for another two years. So that was where we were going to shoot the DVD. We'll either shoot that now on one of the tour dates or maybe put in another London date uh, sometime in June. But there may not be any more London dates, so if you want to come, come to the Leicester Square Theatre. Uh, 11th to 13th of February if it's after those dates you know, buy the DVD if we do anyway, sit back and enjoy Rich Trains Let's Square Theatre Podcast Gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who has just put Stuart Lee's toothbrush up his urethra. Is Richard Herring? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, hello. Welcome to the show. Hello, uh, welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Uh, or as some of the cooler youngsters have started calling. I was hanging around at. Um, <laughs> should really try and think of some cool places before before I start. Uh, there was uh, the Winter Wonderland. I was hanging around. The winter... <laughs> I was hanging around at the uh, Climate Change March in Trafalgar Square, and they were calling it Rahalasta Park. Uh, so that's what they have been doing. And yes, Stuart Lee, uh, you may, if you were listening last week, you'll know that Stuart Lee foolishly left his toothbrush in the dressing room on the sink. I think someone has told him about. The fact that I've definitely put that in my anus. <laughs> you just would, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, so uh, the, he put it on a shelf this week, but I thought, that's not enough for me. It was up high, and I'm small, but I could still see it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit uh, zoned out because uh, my daughter's not very really well, uh, and I've been up all night caring for her. She got very hot. That's bad. It's bad when babies get very. Hot. She turned. She was all pink this morning. It was terrifying. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I've had quite good fun with her before she got uh, ill. And we, we went. I went to play with soft play with her this week. Have you ever been? To, it's amazing. I, was, I, was, I never went to soft play when I was a kid because I don't think they had soft play in the 1970s and 1960s when I was little. Uh, I, we had bouncy castles, but my mum wouldn't let me go on them because they were dangerous. The first time I went on a bouncy castle was when I was 21 years old. Seriously, seriously was. It's not even a joke. Uh, at, a, at a ball, and uh, and they, you know, that's t- I was snogged uh, a future editor of the Erotic Review. Uh, I don't think that snog was what sent her down her career path, though. Uh, it's kind of quite difficult to snog. You just end up banging teeth. It's not. It's not a good place to, to do that. So it's very exciting. So it's worth all, all the snot and the soiled nappies and staying awake all night because you get to go and play in a pit of orange and yellow balls with, which have just b- diseases of other children. <laughs> I now realise the, da- the downfall of them, so I did that. Uh, and uh, also this week, uh, the week that we recorded this, uh, it was the 13th birthday of my blog, Warming Up, uh, which I've done every single day for 13 years. Just insane. Yeah, and I don't think it is worth a round of applause. I think it's like, what? What in the hell have you been doing? Every day, Christmas, birthdays, Christmas Day, someone's died, I've still done it. I don't know, it doesn't... What the fuck is wrong with me? So, uh, so, but even so, I have nothing for my opening monologue, even though I've got 13 years of that. So we're going to crack straight on and introduce 
Today's guest, who is probably best known for appearing in Hello Panda, that is why we're all here. <laughs> to see her. It's Carrie Ed Lloyd, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Carrie Ed Lloyd. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, you've used that before. Hello, Panda. Yeah. Have I? When, what, with one of my other guests? Yeah. Have I? Yes. With Sarah Pascoe. With Sarah Pascoe. Well, yeah, good. He's also in that film. Yeah, she is. I, well, I, 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 it looked like an interesting film, but maybe that's why I realised it. But wasn't. you said you were going to watch it when you interviewed I Sarah. I didn't watch you it. You haven't watched it. It is available to download on iTunes, guys. Is it? Hello, Panda, but H A. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello. You have a bigger part than Sarah. Pastor. I do, I do, but then my husband directed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Were you married when he directed it, or was that how you met? During no, Hello no, Pan we weren't. We weren't married when it happened. Yeah, and yeah, Lee Kern is in it as well. Yeah, it's good. And Neil what's it, tell us what it's about for people who didn't see the Sarah Pascoe one. <laughs> it always sounds really bad when you describe it. it. <laughs> but it's That's why I'm drawn to it. It's <laughs> genuinely. <laughs> It's, I can't believe it. you made Sarah talk about this as well. And I, as I listened to it, I thought, oh, that's good. I won't have to talk about that. Um, it's about a man who works in a zoo and uh, he's in charge of getting the pandas to mate. And genuinely, I don't know if you know this about pandas, like they don't, the reason they're going extinct is their fault. Yeah. So like, they, yeah, they're carnivores, but they, they choose to eat bamboo. Um, <laughs> like that's fact, they, they're meant to be carnivores. They choose to eat bamboo. Bamboo has no nutritional value. So like they have to eat tons of it to get anything. It's why they really sleepy all the time. Yeah. And then they they're so sleepy and tired they don't want to have sex with each other. That's just why they're going extinct. That is true. That's why every time one of them is born, everyone's like, oh my god, it happened because they are like, we just oh, don't want to. I'm tired. Um, so it's about a man who's trying to get the pandas to mate, but uh, he's in love with a girl who works in the mothatarium. Okay. That's me. I worked with the moths, and oh. it's about it's a metaphor. So he oh. has to wank off a panda. <laughs> to try and get to, to try and get the no not to, <laughs> 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 to try and get the pandas to mate okay. but the panda talks and the whole time the panda is like dude she's not into you like I'm not into she she like yeah. you can't make people fall in love with you yeah. it's what it's about it's a really nice little film that sounds good well, I'm going to watch it definitely definitely yeah. <laughs> definitely when you said Moffatarium I imagined a place where Stephen Moffat was kept <laughs> <laughs> that's how my brain is going to be working unfortunately during Stephen this Moffitt sleep is in deprived it. he's in it as well, in yeah. It. yeah 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 we could have like an enclosure of a zoo with just Stephen Moffat's loads of. He, he's the producer of Doctor <laughs> Who. I thought I thought that would fly well with my audience, but I think there's some uh, some uh, Jane Austen fans in today who are confused about the Doctor Who based references. That, that doesn't cross over Jane Austen there's and no, Doctor Who. <laughs> there's no crossover. I, mean, I, think, I don't know which year there is because um, uh, what I, I want to call her an Amelia Pond. That's how bad I am. Thought he's just cop dead, but probably isn't dead. He's probably come back alive again. What's her name in Doctor Who? Come on, you're Doctor Who! Yeah, her. Who? She is friends with Jane Austen. <laughs> she oh, said, she I, yes, they did a Jane Austen episode. I, I, yeah, I haven't seen it. But I did see those Jane I know, it's episode. rubbish. It's for children. <laughs> uh, I, I, pity my, I pity my fans. So, uh... <laughs> I, don't mind, I, I don't mind Doctor Who, but it scares me. I can't yeah. watch it. It's too scary. I'd find it too confusing. I might just be too old for it. <laughs> oh, well, the one I watched last night, everyone was going out brilliant, the one I watched last night was uh, when he was in a little... He's in a little magic castle that turns around and he stays Spoiler there. Spoiler alert, they might be playing He stays there for a billion years and it's a hole in a wall and it's childish. Rubbish. <laughs> it's rubbish, but everyone's I going, this is the best episode of Doctor Who ever. Uh, I just find it too scary. Yeah. Like it, I'm really easily scared. Are you? So, yeah, my husband's very into Doctor Who. Is he? So he watches it and I have to leave the room. <laughs> Which Not is... Which is the scariest Doctor Who monster that has scared you away from? Well, I tell you what, it was the first one I ever saw, yeah. which was in the 80s, and if you're a massive Doctor Who fan, you know exactly what it is. It was a Sylvester McCoy one. Was and it was the, the, the one with the uh, licorice all sorts? No, it was Cats no, okay. with Laser Eyes. Oh, OK. Which I, I met Doctor, if Doctor Who people would instantly go, oh, it's Buddha, but I can't remember what it's called. Sorry. The cats with la laser, laser eyes. By eyes. the time they got to that series, it probably was just called Laser Cats. And it was so <laughs> scary. They're probably called Lightning Cats. Lightning That's probably cats. the most I'll, like I'll get in so cats. much trouble for not remembering what it's called. Mm. But, like, but anyway. they scared you. They had laser eyes and they filmed it because it was like, you know what TV used, like, 
when they filmed stuff, it looked exactly like your road. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like your road anymore when you watch TV, but then it was like, my God, that's my road! And they had houses, and this cat came out and laser-eyed somebody, and they died, and I was like, that could happen! It could happen. I could... So, I think it's the first, it was like the first time I saw something. But I'm someone... I cried at Shaun of the Dead. I thought it was so scary. <laughs> I literally, in the cinema, you know you have, like, where you put your feet? I got yeah. down in the footwell like this and said, I want to go home. Because <laughs> I was so scared. Because that was filmed around Finchley, which is kind of... I grew up in North London, yeah. and so that was even scarier. I've is it just if the thing is <laughs> in a location you can identify, as long as it's in space or something? No, it's anything. I'm it's also anything. scared of stop motion animation. <laughs> Morph? No, that's okay. That's okay. soft. I'm talking about spiky stop motion. You know, Eastern European okay. 1980s stop motion, yeah. jaggedy. Anything jaggedy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do know. Yeah, exactly and it's mean. like when I was a kid, you'd be watching Channel 4. And do you remember they used to show like short films on Channel 4? So like, but a five to eight before something came on. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, just what's there's a thing. And they'd be like, and now on Channel 4, the 1988 classic Sandman by Polish director. And you'd think, oh, okay. And then I'd sit there <laughs> crying. <laughs> it's so scary, it's so scary. Well, yeah. I better ask you this question now. <laughs> okay. you, have you ever seen a ghost? I imagine no. you haven't, or you'd be too scared to. No, I have had weird experiences. Have you? What's, what weird experiences have you had? Well, yeah, I have had weird experiences. <laughs> God, here we go. <laughs> I wanted to not sound crazy. <laughs> it's too late, isn't it? Um, lots of weird things have happened, but the, like, the one that I suppose... Okay, I have obviously Welsh family, yeah. Carrie Lloyd, and um, we stayed in this, like... But, you know, farm converted farmhouse in Wales when I was like, I must have been about eight, mm. and my cousin was with us, so my like the boys took the proper room and I had to sleep downstairs, which I'm still pissed off about, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> and I woke up in the night and I remember thinking, why has my brother come downstairs and opened every single drawer? And someone was opening all the drawers and they were moving all the cutlery yeah. because I was sleepy. I was like, I just thought, oh, my brother's so annoying. <laughs> so I just went back to sleep. But I did, and then they opened the dishwasher, slamming it. And I, and I remember saying, like, Tom, shut up. <laughs> and then in the morning, my cousin came down and said, why were you crying? I said, I wasn't crying. He said, I heard a girl screaming and crying all night. I thought, why didn't you come downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so then I said, well, why did you come down and open the drawers? And they said, we didn't. Uh, and then were the drawers open? No, they weren't, to no. be fair. You know what that was? What? That was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and then we spoke, we spoke to my aunt, and my aunt said... In your yeah, dream, haunted. you start screaming and crying when you're asleep. <laughs> it's very easy to oh explain Oh, my God. That. You have ruined a great family story. <laughs> was a dream. I know, I have had lots of weird experiences. I've never have seen you? anything, but I have had lots of very strange things, yeah. yeah. I know there's lots of dead people in my family. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's <laughs> our own <mind. laughs> Like, direct family. There's what, lots of like weird... the monsters? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's lots of weird, yeah. But no, I've never seen a natural ghost ghost, and I think I would just, I'd just cry and put my head in my hands and yeah. go, go away. Yeah. So. I think most people would do that. It would be scary <laughs> if they actually existed. It would be terrifying. <laughs> But luckily they don't. Do you so not believe it at all? Um, like, have you never had a thing where you've oh, that's a bit weird. Well, a little bit, well, you know, but then th most things get explained. I did talk about one recently where I was in Amsterdam and there was, um, there was just a noise in the kitchen every time I turned the lights on, there was no noise. And, but then it was, and the minute I went back to bed, it would start again. Oh, and it was like a really weird m metallic screeching noise. But then I, in the morning, I realised there was a crisp packet and, there <laughs> and, was, and, a, ma and a mouse had gnawed through this crisp packet, but that's... Which is quite scary because it might have still been the ghost mouse. That is why. Because <laughs> how did the how did the yeah. mouse know there were crisps in that packet? It was a sealed packet. Well, because he can it could read. only know if it's a ghost. But then if it's a ghost, why did it not? Why did it just pass through the crisp packet? And why was it that bothered about the crisps? It was but you his, can't eat you can't dance. explain it all. You can't. No, certainly a Dutch a Dutch ghost might. Operate by different. Do they rules. different? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, Dutch ghosts. Yeah. Oh, completely like, different. Complete. You want a Dutch ghost? No, you want to get someone in. Ghosts are different as well, I imagine. Okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm only racist in the afterlife. <laughs> that is the <laughs> safest place to be <laughs> racist, probably. I imagine all the racists are all together. Yeah. Well, no, I think they'll. I think they'll stick with their own. Because <laughs> uh, anyway. we're all from Africa originally. Well. How you, de how you define the word Africa, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. It was all one big country. It wasn't really called Africa. Well, it wasn't called Africa <laughs> when monkeys lived there, but it was still was Africa. Okay. I'm not talking about um, Europe. You know, what's it called? See, my, the, There's uh, a word for it, isn't it? When no, it was but all I one know country. it, doing routine about it, but because I'm not. Uh, what's it called? 
Pangea. Pangea, yeah. yeah. Pangea. I'm not talking about Pangea. That oh, was okay. different. Oh, okay. That was when all the world was together in one mass. Yeah. And the tectonic plates. You learn stuff in this show as well. <laughs> <laughs> so they all went, you know, things happened. Yeah, they moved away. Yeah. <laughs> They'll probably, this, the BBC will probably screen this as like a... Wreath bright, lecture. Bright. This is the new wreath lecture, everybody. Ah, <laughs> oh, that one goes over there. And if you, if you push them all back together... And yet you back. don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe, I believe in Pangea. Oh, that's good. I believe that South America and Africa once were joined together yeah. because it looks like they probably were. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like a ghost at your crisps. <laughs> it does. Could be. So, carry out. Yes. You have done a lot of things. You started out as an actor. Did yes. you do anything before you were an actor? Did you have a proper I, job? I was a temp. Were you? What did you Woo! Do? <laughs> um, I, well, no, I did loads of jobs. I was one of the, because I wanted to be an actor, so I, I just did a lot of shit jobs. So I quit myself. Oh, yeah? You'd be in, great at that. Oh, I was so bad. I was so... Because now I'm happy because I'm much more fulfilled. Yeah. But when I was a temp, I was sort of like a cross between Darlene from Roseanne and, and Daria. I was like the most miserable, sarcastic person possible. Nice. And it, oh, I worked at Selfridges with actually quite a few comics. And um, there's a train, like they put the kids on the train, it goes yeah. around the circle. And we just used to do awful things because it was just it was just so bored. How, we, better say how awful, because I, oh, I think it was I, really bad. Uh, no, as I'm saying it, <laughs> oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Go on, what? No, I don't think I It can't be as bad as what I'm saying because I'm imagining some children are dead. <laughs> in my, and so are my audience, so you better no, explain you what just, you did. Oh, there were so many weird things. Like, so all the Santas, who were very nice people, they won't watch this. Um, they won't watch this, don't they? They were all, all the Santas for the rest of the year are extras. So they'd say to you, like, oh, so what do you do while you're waiting for a kid to come in? You're like, oh, well, I want to be an actor. Oh, have you been in Harry Potter? <laughs> I have. And then you'll be like, all oh, right, what, what, did you, what did you do? <laughs> like, I'm the wizard behind Hagrid. And you're like, <laughs> but he says it so proudly. And then it, there was one, it's like, have you done James Bond? <laughs> you in the new, there's this new Star Wars come up, you done that? And you're like, no, I haven't. And then they would treat you like you weren't an actor because you hadn't done like big <laughs> British films in their opinion. And then we had like a fake wooden train set in the middle. Like there's all the toys are in the middle of the train. So they, basically the kids can look at it and want to buy it. And there was a toy wooden train and my friend made it look like there'd been a train crash and spelled, <laughs> spelled out on, on wooden letters, spelled out 7-7, seven, seven, we'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can joke about that because I actually, I was around the corner with the bus, so I, I feel like I have slightly more of a sensitive issue. But I don't think, think being around the corner means you're allowed oh, to... Oh, really? I was, around, I was around the corner, so, you know. No, it was awful. It like, was, I, it saw, was I awful. saw it explode. And um, so, yeah, stuff like, because you're just so, you go mental and you have bells you have to shake all yeah. the time. And they shout at you if you don't shout your bell, if you don't wave your bells enough. And, <laughs> but I was how a temp, I was would, a temp raging. How well. much would I have to pay you now for you to come and be a Christmas elf at my house? Oh my for God. Just for December, you? I do Just for you. December. Oh, for the whole, whole of December. <laughs> I want to employ you for a month to just be in my house Why being an elf. The whole, look, I'll do it I for a day. I think you'd be a good elf. <laughs> and it would be nice to have a Christmas. I'd come in and go, there's it's my really Christmas hey, elf. Hey, happy Christmas, happy Christmas. Yeah. Who's excited? <laughs> you have to do that all day. Yeah, I would like that. <laughs> uh, you'd have to pay me, what did I get then? I think I got like £7.50 an hour. Well, so I'd want an increase. I'd want an increase. <laughs> <laughs> I'm £20 an hour. £20 an hour, okay. It's a good Christmas job. Um, but yeah, I was a temp for ages, yeah. basically. So I worked in offices and I worked in shops and I was a tour guide, bus tour guide with Sarah Pascoe. Oh, yes. Because we were living together then and yeah. um, we used to do the same jobs because it was easy to <laughs> get the train <laughs> together. Um, so yeah, we were open top bus tour guides and yeah, just anything, basically. We worked in a college for ages. Right. You started out wanting to be like quite a serious actor, though, did you? Yes, very much. Yeah. I wanted to do Chekhov yeah. or Shakespeare or Ibsen. Those were like... Or Tennessee Williams. Yeah. That was it. And I did, I used to do that. I used to do terrible, terrible fringe productions <laughs> where like we did check off and I was the grandma. Like, because it was, you haven't seen a lot of fringe theatre, that's quite normal that like a 21 year old girl will be like spray painted grey hair to be the grandma because they can't get a, a proper old actress. Yeah. Um, I can't, because I think you always look so, there's always a cheeky glint in your <laughs> eye. I just can't imagine you doing sort of serious drama. No, well, I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always get told off for being, being funny. Yeah. So I had this, there was this play about people who burnt to death, which is actually a very good play that my friend wrote. It was really good. And I had to be a maid in this one scene that was about um, the witch hunts and like a genuine true story of yeah. like when um, we were briefly Catholic and they burnt lots of Protestant uh, um, people. 
Vickers, and I had to come on and be a maid, and it was like classic, like I'd always be slightly too wobbly, and I, I did an accent, and I'd be like, oh, he's been a Berlin, you know, <laughs> how will he survive? And they were like, carry on, can you just deliver the line and leave? And I, I found that really hard. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'd still love to do that. I'd still love to do serious theatre. But it, I was, it just, it got nowhere. Like yeah. I was just bad, and I had no confidence at all. And, so that's why, but people would always laugh. So I, I started doing comedy because I thought, oh, maybe this is, not because I wanted to do comedy, just because I thought, well, this is a bit fun on the side. Yeah. Like, you know, like these, this isn't depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as soon as I started doing comedy, I was much better at it and yeah. it just moved much quicker. So yeah. it's all, it, is Sarah, it is Sarah's fault, a lot of it. Because okay. she was doing stand up. She was, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. she was the one who made me do it. Yeah. yeah. But you got into impro quite yes. soon. Early, which I mean, the things you do are incredibly complex. So I've seen ostentatious and other things you've done, but ostentatious where you and six other, well, five, six people is it? In it six um, it's six a show, but it's seven yeah. in the group. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's um, you basically take a suggestion for a title from the audience and yeah. then improvise a Jane Austen story around. Yeah. That so from scratch. as you come in, we give people in this, in fact, this very venue. You can come and see us on twentieth of December for our Christmas show. Um, we give you a piece of paper as you come in that looks like an old penguin book and people write down titles. And it can be Jane Austen puns, but it doesn't have to be. So we have had Mansfield, Jurassic Park, um, Strictly Come Darcy, Fifty Shades of Darcy, Fifty Shades of Jane, <laughs> uh, Pride and Predator, that was a good one. Um, Northanger Rabbi, that's my play. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, we, and then we just pick it out and then we just, so it's not like whose lines anyway start improv. We just pick out the title, so, sorry, it's so weird. We did a show here last night, and, that's why, <laughs> and we were here. And then we, yeah, improvise a comedy play in the style of Jane Austen. I mean, that just seems incredibly difficult. Because it's, but also because there's six of you. Yeah. And so you have to be able to work out what, where you're going. I mean, and do you have, like, a guideline no, idea? No, no. Just, They're all different. Though. Always different, yeah. Really different. So it was actually easier, I think, cause, because I'm not a stand-up, traditional yeah. stand-up, I think what you do is much because there's only one of you. So for me, it's like, well, there's six of us. So for a sixth of the time, I get to stand over there and be like, oh God, what's happening? <laughs> oh God, what's Joe doing? Oh, okay, we should do that. So you kind of, the responsibility is shared. Yeah. So that's, I like that. But it's like an hour long show, right? Yeah, it's an hour long show. And really, it's storytelling. Yeah. So the two people will start the show and you know, they establish a world and you start thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, oh, he, that's his daughter, but she wants to leave and go to London, but he won't let her. Oh, okay, well, let's make, we need to make it harder for her to, you know, you just yeah. start thinking, well, what should happen next? And that's what all good long form improv should be. You're just trying to think what should happen next yeah. in, the, in the most satisfying storytelling way. And you're just working towards, okay, halfway through, you want her to have, you know, hit rock bottom. Yeah. And then you think, okay, oh, well, now we need to, oh, that guy, she likes that guy, right? We need to make sure he's a good loving. Oh, how can we make that harder? How can we make it harder? How can we make her win? and then tie it all up at the end. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. It's a really satisfying and, and brilliant show. Oh, thank you. But it's just I mean, the concentration required on... I mean, I find it hard to talk to people in this for an hour <laughs> and, rem and remember what they said. That's why, I that's why I don't remember anything that's from any <laughs> of the previous ones. So, uh, you know, it's, kind of, it's, 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 it's very well worth uh, seeing. There is a DVD out on Go there Past Stripe. There is a DVD on Go Past Stripe of a show we did here, Leicester yeah. Square Theatre. And, yeah, we perform twice a month in London... And we also tour as well. We do Edinburgh. We've been doing it for five years now. It's coming to yeah. our fifth anniversary. Did yeah. it take a long time to build up to be able to do that long form thing? We're doing like the little because I mean I always found when I when I started out and when people were doing impro, it was often quite. It was often like student groups, yes. and it was often not very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, it's so hard. the improv like this is when I get basic. The improv scene, scene, scene. The improv scene has changed so much. So I started 10 years ago, and even in that 10 years, it's unrecognisable. When I started, there was like three groups in London, and they were all doing what's known as short form, which is like whose lines anyway style. Oh, we're going to play this game. Oh, Richard doesn't know who he is. Oh, clap. When, which is a great, you know, yeah. a great way of doing it. But then as, as I started, people started bringing over what's known as Chicago style long form, yeah. which is what people like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler... Will Ferrell, Steve Carell, like all of them, everyone from SNL essentially, studied in Chicago style long form. So that's now coming over here and uh, sort of an English version. So I didn't do long form for quite a while. I no. started in short form. Um, but now, you know, you can, there's so many classes teaching long form. But when I, there wasn't when I started. We had yeah. to teach ourselves, which is why we were quite bad at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but I think improv gets such a bad rap because 
it's such a small scene. If yeah. stand-up was as small as improv, and you saw one bad stand-up, an audience member would go, oh, I don't like stand-up. Yeah. But because stand-up's so big, you know, I could watch a stand-up and go, well, I didn't like that, but that doesn't mean... I won't say, I don't like stand-up. I'll be like, oh, well, I don't like... Yeah. Which... <laughs> no, 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 saying, and understand <laughs> I'm like Marmite, apparently. Yeah. I would you never either, say you that. You either hate me or you haven't heard of me. That's what... That's <laughs> what but with improv, because it's so small, I think people see one improv show and they go, yeah. oh, well, I didn't like that, I don't like improv. Whereas really, you just have to, like with all mediums, you have to see, it's like, you have to see yeah. good improv and yeah. you'll like it. You have to see good stand-up, you have to see good sketch. And unfortunately, you, you can't police people doing improv. <laughs> like, I can't stop the bad people doing it. You could try. I do, I teach classes. <laughs> okay, I teach to try and be like, guys, let's all get better at this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Ostentatious is amazing, I have to say, so do get, go and see if you get a chance. And I'm, I'm amazed you tour, because I would have just thought the overheads of six people touring together would make it impractical. But yeah, I mean, it is, it is quite hard. <laughs> 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 but we, we, this, when we started, we played to a pub, we started in a pub around the corner of Leicester Square to 12 people. Yeah. And we had no, we were just doing it because we thought it was fun. And then we didn't realise how many people love Jane Austen. And I can inform you, it's way more people than like improv. Yeah. <laughs> so when we do gig, we get people who've never seen improv. They never, they don't go to comedy gigs, but they love Jane Austen. Mm -hmm. So it's nice in a way, because you're sort of bringing them into stuff, being like, oh, hey, <laughs> there's this other world. Yeah. Um, people love Jane Austen, hardcore. That's what, so we sell out a lot of places. That's good. Thanks. I'm going to do a show about Jane Austen next. Seriously, <laughs> there's a whole circuit. There's like a festival circuit of Jane Austen stuff. I have no idea. I, I fuck Jane Austen's corpse. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, that'll bring him well, in. Well, no, nobody fucked her when she was alive, so uh, it'd be nice for her. Yeah. <laughs> Poor lady. Um, the George Osborne you were telling me backstage. Oh, came I knew to you were going to bring show. that up. I saw. <laughs> I said it backstage, I saw you write it down, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> George Osborne came to see our show in Edinburgh, came to see Austin Davis. I know. But it was, I was saying, it's really hard, because we have to, we, like, the, the cast give out the programmes and slips, because we, we feel we just explain it easier. So you, you are talking to the queue, and the queue sometimes think you're just ushers, so it's a bit weird. And I saw him, but I did that thing where you recognise someone, but you don't know why. So I was thinking, oh, it's an Edinburgh, it's a comic or something. Oh, it's a producer. <laughs> I actually thought it was a producer, because he looks like slightly... Ascent, you know, sort it of looks like a kind of puppet <laughs> from, a, from a Victorian freak show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you might have thought, oh, it's that puppet from Yeah, or like somebody works, man somebody works on a channel or something, you yeah. know what I mean? Like that slightly industry yeah. thing, you're like, oh God, it's that man who's not funny, but it has loads of power, remember to be nice to him. Yeah. Um, so I sort of smiled and I was like, hello. And then as I was saying, oh, you just need to write a title. Oh, and I realized halfway through, I was like, oh, it's George Osborne. <laughs> so I was like, oh, thanks so much, you just need to write a made up title of a Jane Austen novel, it doesn't matter what you write. And then walked off and then um, Andy in the group who is, um, he's like, <laughs> he's much more, he's not right wing, but he's much posher than I am. And he, in his eyes, I'm like Red Ken or something. So he was like, carry on, don't say anything, behave yourself. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm going to say something in the show. I'm going to make a rant about arts cuts. And, but it, we were sold out. It was in the, the Adderbelly Cow. So it's like 400 people. Yeah, amazing. And I just had this, I was horrible because I did think this is a chance. We could go on and we could like do something. Like, come on guys. And I thought, oh, but 400 people haven't paid for you to do an unprepared rant about the arts cuts. <laughs> so we just did a show. We did a show about um, a, ri a very rich, arrogant man <laughs> who had to learn his lesson by giving his money away. <laughs> and that's when this woman, this woman would fall in love with him. Um, so we sort of did it. And then some people knew he was there. So the ti everyone writes down different titles. And we had about five titles that were George Osborne and the arts cards, <laughs> which we didn't, we picked them out of the hat and we didn't get it. But as I said to you, the, yeah. the worst realization afterwards was I said to the gang, like, oh, we're the most suitable Edinburgh show for, us, for George Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> like it's our, sh it's our show. Because you do stuff in comedy, you think, yeah. oh, we're cool, we're doing fun stuff. No, <laughs> you're doing shows that George Osborne wants to see. He probably heard that they were giving out free pencils <laughs> to write on the thing. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Uh, just trying to get that. I mean, I'm, not, I'm never going to explain that, but if you, and you can't find it on the internet, apparently, but there's a good reason I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> Uh, let me ask you an emergency question to get out of my uh, possibly uh, okay. 
suable. I mean, you know, the thing with George Osborne, he can probably just have me rubbed out, can't he? <laughs> That's why he likes pencils so much. So, uh, oh it's... I don't know what you're talking I about, know, no but I'm going to Google it. No one. Try Googling and all you'll find is me talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> you spreading the one rumour. It it's what I'm like. Um, this is a, an emergency question from Tim Turner that's very enjoyable. Uh, Richard Dawkins claims to have seen dogs doing a 69. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst lie you have ever told to impress <laughs> Yeah. Do you ever lie? I mean, the thing, it's a difficult question to answer because if you have lied, then... I honestly, I'm, I... I'm, this is why I'm not very good as myself. <laughs> because I'm extremely honest. Oh, yeah. So I don't lie very well. Like, I'm... I'm if you're friends with me, it's, it's, I'm too honest. Right. So I, I don't really have a worse What's life. What's the most honest thing you've ever oh, told? Oh, no, it? awful. <laughs> Just told people what I thought of them. Yeah. And that, that's why I do character comedy, because I'm, I'm not that funny when I'm me. I'm just very earnest and sincere and <laughs> honest. And it's difficult. It's intense. It's like this. It's not always funny. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> but, so yeah, I haven't told the worst lie. Like, kid, oh, no, I didn't do that. That was my friend at school. Well, she, pretend it was you and then this could be the worst okay, lie you not, ever told. Oh, that's how comedy works. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I was working out. I was working out. My friend pretended that someone in her family had died to get off a bakery shift, which I always thought was the worst thing you could do. <laughs> We worked in a bakery and it was really boring and she didn't turn up for a Saturday shift and she rang in and said like her sister had died. <laughs> so, but then she was like, I don't have a sister so it's all right. And I thought, I don't think that's all right. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's not really impressive. It's a difficult question. I'll ask you an easier I'm question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'll ask you an easier question. Um, what celebrity would you like to stroke your hair as you die? Uh, David Bowie. David Bowie. David Bowie. I'm obsessed with David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah, I did a 53-hour improv show um, in Canada. Genu they do it if we do one here for 50 hours, and we start on Friday, we finish on Sunday. We don't stop, so you don't have a break. Like, you, you stay awake. Yeah. And um, it, yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Obviously, some of it's awful because some of it is just people being like, "Oh, uh, uh, what?" And people fall asleep. A man, uh, my friend Donovan, thought he was dying. He thought he died. He felt he drank so much during the 50 hours. He woke up. And a man was just as a devil trying to make him do a scene. And he was like, ah, just started screaming. Um, but one in Canada, this guy dressed up as David Barry from the Labyrinth years. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm so, like, that was like one of my first crushes. And um, he was so cool. He like, he had a straw in his pocket and he kept saying, I'm drinking my suit, which I thought was the funniest thing ever. Um, and so in the 53 hours, I played his wife. Like we got together in the show. And um, halfway through, my brain broke. It felt like it broke. And I thought, he was real. <laughs> and I thought, I'm married to David Bowie. <laughs> and I was on the, on the stage, and I was thinking, he's married. He's married to that beautiful woman. How am I going to... She's going to be so upset about this. He's just <laughs> met me. And I was thinking, I'm going to be on the cover of Hello, because... <laughs> and then my friend Paul put apples up his arms, because he was pretending to be Aquaman. And he turned to me and said, I think I've got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> So then we both got carried off because we were like like older improvisers were like you're going you're going through this it's like it's like the recognizable condition yeah but it's like I don't, I don't do drugs or i have never really done drugs so no. for me it's like that's what pe friends have told me or like when you take drugs someone takes you away it's like it's okay you're having a bit of a bad trip like yeah. that's just the same thing they're like you're having a bad improvathon you just need to breathe <laughs> but in my head me and this guy it's like we're ex-boyfriend because we were because you're improvising playing their partner for 53 hours yeah you think, we kind of went out. <laughs> we, we had to climb a volcano together, we had to defeat a dragon, like... But Are you sure you're actually married to your husband? <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't just another impro no. thing? That's yeah, no, he's definitely... How would you know that all reality might... He, this might be... We might be improvising here. This might be... Oh, don't, that's, that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I sometimes wonder. Is any of it real? Yeah, that's the danger. So, because when you do... Because, do you ever heard of Ken Campbell? Yes, I yeah. love Ken Campbell. Oh, so that's where he's... A, Guy yeah. who got me involved in a lot of improv. Oh, and really? Yeah, and he's the one. He went to Canada. He went to Canada and saw them do this 53 hour show. And he came back and he was like, Right, we've all got to do this 50 hour show. You don't know Ken, that's how he used to speak. And he was like <laughs> a mad theatre kind of just a brilliant wizard of a man. But he didn't tell us that in Canada they often don't do the whole thing. Right. He was like, Nah, we've all got to do the whole thing. You've got to do it. So we all did the whole thing, went mental. Because he said, Oh, hour 36, you'll go through the Stargate. And that's when pure improv will happen. <laughs> That's what Ken told us all. And then when it got when the Canadians came over, they were like, oh, you're doing the whole thing. No, we're 
like, we, maybe we should do that. And we were like, you don't do the whole thing. Some of them do, but um, so yeah, Ken got me like quite heavily involved in like, improv. So I was doing it before, but he's was like, and that's why we don't go to see. His, his big thing was like, otherwise, it's, otherwise, why are you doing it? You're just yeah. making it up as bullshit. You yeah. might as well do it met, like the most extreme way possible. He was nearly Doctor Who. Yeah, he was. They said yeah. he was too scary. Yeah. And so they got his friend Sylvester McCoy yeah. to do it. That was a mistake. They should have had Oh, he would have been amazing. He, yeah. he was such an amazing man, yeah. But, like, terrifying. Terrifying. Really hard to work with. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, like a pure genius, you know, like, you're sort of, you, you just have to listen. And if you try and speak, it was quite hard sometimes. No, great. He did amazing one-man shows. Oh, amazing, amazing, yeah. Saw him a few yeah. times. He's absolutely one of my heroes. Um, especially now I've heard about how he you know, got off with loads of young actors. <laughs> well, that is, that yeah, I didn't I know didn't, about that at the time. I didn't have that. I no, met okay. him just before he died when he was very much mellowed. And right. he, was still t- he still used to throw things at you and shout at you. He once called me carrier bag and told me to fuck off. Oh. <laughs> we were doing a job on a cruise ship. We were improvising poetry and I tried to disagree with him. And he went, oh, fuck off, carrier bag. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. He was harsh, but he was right. I should have shut up. So, and then I went from he used to be obsessed with dogs. Yeah. He used to go to his house, and well, I went to his house to walk his dogs. He had three dogs. One who had bitten a policeman and had got off. Like Ken defended his dog. <laughs> Ken defended his dog because he'd bitten a policeman, and he went to court and said you can't put him down because they had known history. This policeman apparently had wound up the dog before. Right. So Ken defended him and said it wasn't fair. The dog was under pressure. <laughs> And the dog got off and Ken was like, oh, I'm a genius, I'm a genius. But he found out that same day, Princess Margaret's corgi had been in court for biting a, a servant. And obviously they can't put down Princess Margaret's cor- corgi. Right. So they'd let her off. So because they couldn't then not, they couldn't then kill a dog, Ken's dog had got off because of Princess Margaret. <laughs> in Amazing. dog courts. In dog courts. Are you yeah. sure this is really, really happening? <laughs> <laughs> this no, might God, be an like, oh, you never know with Ken, actually. You never know. <laughs> He had a dog that he said was used to go and buy gypsies, and if you said shoes, it would go and get you some. <laughs> he was a trained thief dog, he told me. Again, it might not be true, it's Ken. <laughs> so, you've been doing, you do lots, as well as improv, you do lots of acting, and you're in lots of, you've done a lot of things on BBC Three. I've done a lot of things, which is why I'm so sad they're taking it off the air. <laughs> that is my income gone for a bit. <laughs> yeah. But there's great stuff, so you've done your own show on, is that, is that, was it a one off? Show. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was yeah. a pilot, which they did nothing <laughs> with. Uh, the Carry Ad Show, which I've put on YouTube. Is it up on YouTube? It's not meant to be there. I've only seen some little clips, but I didn't see it on YouTube. I must I've secretly them. recently put it up there, because <laughs> they get rid of things on iPlay. If I do this, they won't hear. Um, <laughs> it's all right, they're not. There's no one from the BBC <laughs> watching this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on my, it's on my YouTube channel. No. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. Yeah, I put it on YouTube because they, they make all these pilots, they put them on for a year and then they're like, well, now we have to take it off because yeah. we've got the new ones. And I thought, fuck you, carry a bag. I'm going to put it on my... <laughs> it's a 15-minute pilot that I'm... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's just a pilot. <laughs> the yeah. point of that story. But, but there's, so there's all these... Ca- but they're, they're great characters. You I mean, you've done them in an Edinburgh show as well. Are they yeah, the they same were, characters from an Edinburgh show? They were they? taken from two Edinburgh shows. Yeah. So I did two solo shows in Edinburgh and then we kind of amalgamated and yeah. did a 15-minute pilot. I thought they were good characters. They're great. There's a Zooey Deschanel kind of character. Joey, Joey Bechamel. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's my most hidden, hidden version. <laughs> yeah, Joey Bechamel. And then Jack Lecoq, who's a parkour expert. <laughs> and Cockney Sam as well. Right. Those are my faves. Yeah, so, do, where do you get your crazy ideas from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just from dreams okay. and thoughts. Um, it's, start, it's always, it's, everyone says that stand up, but I'm always like, depends, depends on the character. Yeah. It's like, where do you get stand up material from? It's like, <laughs> I, co- I just copy it off other people. <laughs> it, sometimes it's because I can do a voice. So, I have a character called yeah. Kitty Romford, who's a film noir lady who works in Asda, hey? And um, that's just because I used to walk around the house really driving my husband mental, being like, say, you want some breakfast or what? And yeah, it's obviously not that good. And, uh, <laughs> and so I just wrote, I thought, oh, it would be funny if she worked in Asda. So she's in a complete, in her head, she's in a film noir. And we, did a, yeah. we filmed it like a film noir sketch. Um, and then Jack Lecoq, again, because I could rap badly in French. So I, I tried to get a character that could rap in French. <laughs> just stupid things that yeah. you're like... Oh, and then the Joey Bechamel, I, I actually really like Joey Bechamel, and I would never do a character that's anti another female in comedy. But what I was trying to satirise was New Girl, because I watched that and I couldn't 
understand that people liked it. I yeah. couldn't under the the advertising for it. You know, she was in she was in a like prom dress coming out of a box covered in straw. Like I just fell out of a box. <laughs> like, and and I just felt like if you if that character had blonde hair and a boob job and said the same lines, everyone would hate her and go, oh, she's awful. Yeah. But because they gave her brown hair and glasses and like a 1950s dress sense, suddenly that was okay that she was like, I just want a boyfriend. And I just found that really irritating. Yeah. That's, well, that's a very funny sketch. And you, well, and you did this, recently you've done this video, bad, the bad blood. The, the bad blood. The bad blood <laughs> video of like pa pastiche. Yeah, we, there's a Taylor Swift Talking song. Talking of George Osborne. Talking yeah. About, yeah, yeah, we, there's a Taylor Swift song called Bad Blood. And me and another comedian called Jenny Bede spoofed it about tampon tax. <laughs> Don't err, uh, as I will come out there and put a tampon in you so that you understand what it's like. Because 50% of the population have to deal with this. So don't fucking err uh, like it's disgusting. It's not disgusting. Thank you. Yes. I like that they were like, It's a bit oh. disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, it's not, like, it's not disgusting. Like, trust me, when a woman, when you have a really heavy period, I'll go there, and you're looking down <laughs> at a toilet and it looks like a murder, you know when it's like fucking heavy and you're like, Jesus Christ, and you think, shit, like, what the fuck, am I okay? Like, I'm like it looks like you've shot someone. <laughs> like, that is a bit, it's not disgusting, it's just like, that's, it's, that's how the human body works. Like, it, but when people are like, eh, and I do a character called Sanitary Bag Lady. Right. Now, some, there's these hor in really horrible old toilets, you get these paper bags. Do you know, like, some of you will know what I mean, sanitary, but the paper bags, yeah. and there's a black and white woman on there, like, it looks like a night, like, a seven bell, and she's like holding a dress like this. <laughs> and I do this character called the Sanitary Bag Lady, and I put red lipstick all over my face, and I come out, and I'm like, I'm the Sanitary Bag Lady. Is anyone bleeding? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> And when I do it, and like, and I've got a massive paper hat, like a huge paper hat, so it looked like the lady. When I do it, it what really annoys me is, is that I get like, and often it's women being like, oh. And I look at one woman and go, is it you? Are you bleeding? Can I smell you? And she's always so like, oh, like, which I can understand, because I would probably react the same, but I just think, I don't know, someone's got to talk about it. You should just talk about why not talk about it. Like, men, People do comedy about jizzing. They like, do. They do comedy about <laughs> shitting, yeah. And, uh, some, some comedians will do that. Yeah. They'll go, they will go there. So I just feel like, fuck, fuck you, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. So the Bad Blood one was, yeah, we, we did like, it was about the VAT on tampon tax, which has been reduced, but it's still 5%. And they recently said they're going to make that money go to women's charities. Right. Like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind. Now we can pay for the other women that the men hit. Thank you. <laughs> Like, fuck you. Really, it, it makes me so angry. <laughs> it won't um, correctly so, but that's, you know, that's where g good comedy can come yeah. out of that, that anger. I mean, it is unbelievable oh, when you stop it. and think about it for half a second. Yeah. Yes, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and that there's no VAT on pita breads or Jaffa cakes or crocodile meat or, what is it, it's like canal boat towing material. Like, it's insane. Pencils, there's no VAT on pencils <laughs> and there never will be. <laughs> Look this up. <laughs> I need to know. So yeah, and I wasn't this angry until you know you start looking at things. And yeah. definitely when I was younger, I, I would have been very much like, oh no, I don't want to say that. How, how embarrassing. But you get older and you just think, oh, I don't care. It's a great video. It's a good production values on it. Everyone says that. We filmed it in a day. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've used a bit of the original video. No, it's all oh, green screen. Have you? Yeah, it's yeah. green screen. No, because we, we couldn't use the original video. We'd be well, sued. You're using the song though, aren't you? No, we, well, we're using a, a copy yeah. of the, like, you've changed the notes so okay, it's enough. Yeah. That, really? Yeah, because it's, it's Taylor Swift. We didn't want to mess with Taylor. <laughs> I think she'd let you off, wouldn't she? I think that she hasn't retweeted it. Please feel free to tweet her. <laughs> I tweet her every month. Hey, Taylor, we love you, but we hate the tampon tax. <laughs> retweet? No, she's not, she's not doing it. No. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I've got like 25 women, 25 female, female comedians, I shouldn't say that, 25 women comedians, um, in a room, and then we filmed it on green screen. But my, the guy who directed it, Adam Brown, has done, he's a brilliant director, has done music videos, so yeah. he did an amazing, the production job was all to do with him. He made it look very slick and exciting. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to, like, the thing is, because I didn't get the sketch show. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm fine about it. But <laughs> it does make you think, I guess with the podcasting, it makes you go, oh, fuck it, well, I'll just do stuff myself. Yeah. So what, the reason that got made is I wrote on Facebook, I said, if I had a sketch show, what I would do this week was I would spoof Bad Blood yeah. and I would do it about this. And my name would be Heavy Flow. Because all the women in her video, in the original video, they've all got really stupid names. And um, loads of comedians, women comedians, were like, oh my God, oh, my name would yeah. be, I can't remember any of them, en <laughs> Endometriasis. And, 
Um, oh, massive pad. And um, <laughs> so, like, literally about 50 women were like, you should, why don't you do it? So that's yeah. why we did it. We just thought, oh, okay. But it's really, I think you should probably just, I mean, I think that, that's what, BBC Three is now essentially is just the same as yeah, a, exactly. a YouTube channel. And so you get, you so get way more control. Yeah. Like, I had so many people telling me what I could and couldn't do when we did the pilot. Yeah. Like, in, like, comedy version of, like, exec saying things like, oh, you can't mention the word asparagus. People who watch BBC Three don't know what asparagus is. Like, re yeah, genuine. You can genuine. do that on this podcast. Yeah. Them, they all know what asparagus is. <laughs> they know everything about asparagus yeah. on this podcast. <laughs> So yeah, I like it. That's what I'm going to do more of. Just yeah. make it myself because it's more fun. It costs yeah. you more, is the only problem. Well, it does, but I think you know. I think there will be ways to make that work out. I mean, it, it, it's so difficult. I think there's loads of there's so many pilots that come up and they're yeah. great, and then nothing happens. You know, but it's yeah, so, there's, yeah. it's much harder these days. Oh, it's so much harder these days. And yeah. I, I honestly think you can't complain. You just have to make stuff, you and that's what, what happened at the start of my career. Like yeah. nothing was happening, so I just did it myself. So. <laughs> I always say to people, just go and do it your own self, and then somebody will be like, "Oh, can we have that idea?" Yeah. So. But you're in, you know, you're doing a lot. You doing a lot because I've been looking, watching. Well, you're in Peep Show. This I last mean, year is a Peep, Peep Show, which is very yeah, exciting. Yeah. So exciting! I'm still excited. <laughs> <about> it. <laughs> it's a great. Well, I've, I've, we're, we're only about halfway through the series yeah. as we talk, so we don't know what happens at the end. But the, oh, the episode exciting. that went out this week with the dinner party was just one of the best episodes. It's of Peep amazing, Show. wasn't it? And yeah. I, that's the most I'm in it. To be honest, that's <laughs> my main episode. Even having even been there and filmed it, I still was st still laughing at like the script. Such yeah. a good, such a good script. Yeah. I was a bit of a, like a fan of Peep Show before, so I, yeah. the whole time I was there, I was like, oh, I'm in the flat. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's talking to me. <laughs> like it was, and then a lot of the people who work on that show, like the other actors, are, haven't seen it for some reason. Like they mainly have actors, not comedians, it yeah. seems. So they were like, oh, have you seen it all? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to series one, that joke they just done. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. It's so I feel very lucky to be in that show. Very yeah. lucky. And I really enjoyed Murder. I didn't think I would. No, no I one really did. Everyone says that. I, really I thought it'd be shit. <laughs> Murder yeah. was successful. It was yeah. really, really good. There's a second series of Is that. Is there, yeah. Out. Yeah. I don't know if I'm in it yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you're sort of playing, you know, celebrity. Well, they're, they're sort of impressions, but not quite impressions. Yeah, well. when we did a taster where yeah. loads of comedians didn't do impressions. So, like, I'm sure I can tell you this, like, Ricky Grover was Adele, but as if he was having... He wasn't. Uh, he was like an Irish nun, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I did Justin Bieber as like a you know New York gangster. So, but then the BBC saw it and they were like, "Can there be some more impressions?" <laughs> so they, the producers are very good on that show and they allow some comedians like me who can't really do but do sort of weird versions. And then there's some brilliant people like Luke Kempner and um, Liam Horrocat who genuinely do the impressions. So I like it because yeah. it means you can have weird stuff, but yeah. it's not so weird. Well, they, so they've got an actual celebrity and they're trying to solve a crime and you're, so yeah. there's, again there's impro in there I'm yeah well there's a script like, there yeah. is a script but like I, <laughs> I'm very bad at sticking to it <laughs> so yeah an actual celebrity comes in and there's been a murder in Successville but they interview so, so I, I was <clears throat> Justin Bieber Miley Cyrus Darcy Bustle and oh god who's the other one you were the uh, girls allowed girl for the, the no. Georgie girl weren't you no oh, okay <laughs> With, so. with Deborah Meaden, who was who was oh, that? Oh, I was sorry. Yeah. Yes, I'm Cheryl, Cheryl Fernandez Fernandez. Yes, you were her. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was her. Yeah, that she Deborah Meaden was very funny. That She's she, she could get her own series. Oh my God, she was so brilliant, <laughs> and she's a total character. Like off screen, she's really sweet and lovely. Right. And I was, you know, when you're sort of impressed, you think you're a really good character comic. You just don't. You just you've used that skill for something else. Use that skill to make huge amounts of money in money, business. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's we should brilliant. think about that. Maybe we should do five years of doing that and then come back and make our own TV shows with all the money we've made. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> well, we just sit in chairs and just say, I'm out to like, other yeah. comedians. We could do that. That yeah. could work, yeah. I don't know, we could do that with some ideas. Um, good. Uh, well, and so with the, vo and the Vodka Diaries, is that also not going to be a series? That's not a series either. That no, looked really good. It's good, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I was and with uh, Ashling B. Ashling was in it, and uh, Gwyneth Keyworth and Rosamund Hansen, who's in oh, <coughs> the one set in Nottingham that is... Oh, yeah. Oh, England, is nine... This, this is England. This is England. Sorry, yeah. I was gonna say England nine to five. I was like, <laughs> no way. Um, yeah, and it was again like you know it was very fun, but didn't yeah. get serious. I've been in a lot of BBC pilots. For but BBC that's good, you know, but you're in stuff. So that, yeah, all, no, all it's that great. needs to happen great. is one thing goes ballistic, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, yeah. then they come back and say, "Oh, could you do a sketch <laughs> show?" You go, "Yeah, I could fucking yeah, do a sketch yeah. show." <laughs> yes, I could. Yeah, no, but I I'm not mind. going to. Sketch is really unfashionable at the moment. Um, but it cu it's always in circles, isn't it? It's yeah. like there was a time when stand-up shows were unfashionable. There was a time when studio sitcoms were unfashionable, and then you get, you know, Miranda, and you get yeah. Stuart Lee's comedy vehicle, and it's like, yeah. things will come. <laughs> 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 I knew you were going to do that. 
Yeah. It's, well, it's, but it's very yeah, hard to get out. things on because most things are panel shows now. That is the problem. Yeah, because they're yeah, yeah. easier to do and they're cheap. They're cheap. To do. They're cheap. And also, you know, people don't watch TV in the same way. And sketch shows aren't... Like Cardinal Burns was a very successful sketch show. Didn't yeah. get nearly as much people watching it as, say, some of the lesser good BBC Three sitcoms because people yeah. go, oh, I want to know what's going to happen. Like... So it's tough. So you can't you can't complain. You just have to reinvent it for what's yeah. happening now. But it's a big. Sh- I think it's a big shame. BBC. Th- I mean, I don't really watch BBC Three, yeah. but it's it's a shame that it's going because it's this breeding ground for new stuff. I no, don't get me started. I think it's a real shame, and I know people make jokes about BBC Three, but it produces a lot of new comedy, yeah. and it also allows people to be crap, which is really important because if you watch the first series of Not Nine O'clock News or even like bloody early to like. I'm, like so people kill me for saying like Monty Python sketch shows are hit and miss yeah. and any comedian like they that's where you that's the primary school in sketch shows there's so many people who've come through that you know yeah. like like Little Britain if you look at what Matt and David are doing now like they learn through doing the sketch shows through doing the hit and miss stuff to do the sitcoms to write yeah. the show so if you don't have a training ground where will where will you get the future brilliant sitcoms from yeah. so I, I think it's backwards mistake. Yeah. Well, I think they're just giving up on the idea. I think they're just bending over backwards and being fucked by a Tory government and trying to please someone who's constantly fucking them. And yeah. I've, I've been in that girlfriend, and I'm telling you, <laughs> he doesn't love you. So I feel like, just guys, just just leave him. Like, why do they... Oh, I know. But it's, you know, people love the BBC. It's a hugely yeah. important thing, and hopefully it will stay. Hopefully. <laughs> it will, it will, in some way. It just has to. It has to. It's so important. Do you not think it's important? I do think it's important, but I think it's fucked. And do the you? NHS is fucked. And, you know, because we're not oh going no. to have a Labour government for another decade, and by then it's all gone. It's a cheery comedy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. I'm much more, I feel like there's always hope. There's always hope. Things can be turned around. I would just, think with both those things, I think, though, you would think, I and mean, then I think 20 years ago, there would have been things that people were just going, well, there's no way we're getting rid of that. Yeah, that's and people, true. We're, you know, there'll be people marching out the streets and yeah. we even suggested changing them a bit. But now yeah. people, and it's, people have become very self-centred and don't see the bigger picture in these things. Oh. You know, and believe, well, they'll go, you know, there's, there's some, <laughs> in the Richard Bacon went one next week, someone as <laughs> Richard Bacon once had polyps on his um, throat and then talked about on his radio show, and someone went on the Daily Express and said, I don't spend more than £130 a year on a licence to listen to him prattle on about ill health. And you kind of go, there were other things on the BBC. <laughs> and it's not like, that wasn't, that didn't cost 130 quid, yeah. that bit. That was, you know, that was, you could say that was free and the rest of the stuff. So, I know, you know, but people incredible. don't, there's that thing, that, there's a BBC Twitter thing they produce which shows you, like, the amount, the amount you pay is like 74, 84p and the amount of challenge yeah. you get compared to what you pay for one HBO show like, and how yeah. much they produce. And I think, uh, yeah, you know, people don't understand how much it costs to make a programme. And I think comedy's really tough because when a new comedy starts, people just love to pull comedy down in a way that, like, London Spy, new drama, I, people go, oh, it's okay. First one was okay. New comedy, uh, it's awful. It's aw- why, did they, why did they get a series? <laughs> She's shit. You know, and like, I had that when my show was shown. Like, people were like, what is this shit, At Lady Carriad? <laughs> I'm sorry, At Lady Carriad. Got to tell you, it's shit. And you're like, really? It's BBC Three, it's two o'clock in the morning. Why <laughs> do you care? But people feel very attached to their, their money, you know, their license yeah. fee. I wish they'd charge to watch iPlayer. Why don't they do that? Like Netflix, why don't they do that? I'm so confused that that I feel like that would raise the money. Well, they're doing this thing, aren't they, where you can get some of the old t- shows. Oh, are they? And they're doing a sort of Netflix of the BBC with some yeah. of the show. You can't get my stuff on there, <laughs> <laughs> and you, you never will. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's it's interesting. But I, I think with comedy, it takes a long time to yeah. you know. But that's because so many people are trying to do it, and there are so many outlets to do it. Yeah. When I was a kid. A, a new comedy show for young people would come along every six months or a year. Yeah, yeah. And then you would just have to watch it. And then yeah, there's would, nothing and, else. Was and there? then you would like it because it yeah. was, you know, usually because it was usually quite good. But now there's those things come out so often that for something to break through and for a person yeah. to become a big star, I think is is very difficult. Yeah. And so you know, and like, all the comedy shows I really like, I hated the first time I saw them. Oh, all so of them. So the first fifteen minutes. Yeah, you always go, "This is awful." Yeah. And then like six episodes in, you're like, "These people are my family." <laughs> But the problem is the people who make the choice about what goes on yeah. aren't uh, good enough at their job to go, this one will be the success. So that's, so that's why so it's, it's a big expense 
In America, it's the other way around. So in America, they realise comedy is the is the way to make money. Yeah. You get successful com- comedy, and then it makes millions and millions of dollars. But if you go, I've been to LA, and over there, yeah. they're like, "Oh, you guys have it so you're so clever. The six <laughs> episodes, the quality of what you like. I think it's so easy because I'm I love American comedy. Yeah. I w- watch a lot of it. Um, all comics are like, oh, it's so much better over there. Like they know what they're doing. <laughs> and over there, they're like, oh, you've got Toast of London, you've got Peep Show, you like, like it's so incredible. You're like, yeah. it's just easier. Well, to you do see that, you know, you cherry pick the better things. But yeah. That's quite. So w- when you went, I was going to ask you about that. So you go over t- as a to do the pilot season. I went. Like. I like dipped my toe in. Yeah. yeah, I went over to sort of have a look. Yeah. Just because the improv scene is so massive over there. Yeah. So like when you go over there and you say you're an improviser, they're like, yeah, sure. And when you do it here, they still some producers are like, oh, and how does that work? And who are they? And like, who's lying? You think. Out, come on, like, how do you not know how it's working? So it's a bigger sell, I suppose. But yeah. it was, oh, it was very scary. I found <laughs> it very intimidating. Would you like to go and work in America? Um, only like obviously if the right thing. If yeah. There's an amazing project, yeah. But I did, I didn't have that thing that some people have of like, I burn very easily, and I don't <laughs> drive. <laughs> so I found it really difficult. I was always hot and burnt, and I was always stuck waiting for an Uber. And being like, <laughs> and often quite upset, being like, I don't know how to get there. And so yeah, it's a really hard city. Yeah. Like, you know when like I feel because I grew up in London, and some of my friends who come from the countryside, like, oh, when I came to London, it was so scary. Like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and that's how I felt with LA. I was like, it's so big and it's scary. It's massive. Yeah. And meetings are just it, like, yeah, it's a different. And world. there could be an earthquake at any moment. Yes, there could be. Sea. You could. Why would you build a city where you're yeah. all gonna die? Just this adds a little frisson. It's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> if you had to go for a week's holiday with one of the puppets from Spitting Image, <laughs> did you ever? You, you, you might be too young to remember Spitting Image. I do Image remember problem. it, okay. but I only remember the Ian Hislop and Paul Merton puppet. Okay, well, it might be one of them. Wh- wh- okay. Which would you choose to go on holiday with? But remember, the puppet would choose the destination. You would go on. You'd go on holiday with the puppet, the puppeteer, and the voiceover artist. <laughs> But the puppeteer and the voiceover artist would not engage with you, except, <laughs> except via the puppet. So if you tried to talk to... What the if there was an emergency? What if, I, know. what if I cut myself and I was like, I need you to um, help me? The puppet would help you. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to do it in character. What if the there was a car crash and I was like, I need you to hold the blood, you need to call an ambulance? They'd they just don't, they go say, no. I can only, I'm, I'm Paul Merton, I can, I'll try and help you with my rubber hand. That's what they'd have to say. If there was a car crash in Ostentatious, would you just, you would stay in character? No, I wouldn't. You I'm would. not mental. That's <laughs> like a bad. I would be like, sorry, guys, we've got to stop the show. No, you have to carry on. <laughs> People have paid Well, I can that. only remember the Ian Hislop one, and that yeah. was quite small. And I like Ian Hislop, so yeah. I'd go away with him. You were cheeky to Ian Hislop. I was cheeky to Ian Hislop. The, have I got news to you, though? It edited together a bit weirdly. Loads of my <laughs> friends texted me and was like, he just reacted very badly to you asking him out. <laughs> but in the studio, it wasn't like that. In the right. studio, it was like, ha, 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 how funny. Like, yeah. obviously, he's joking. But the, as the edit... But yeah, it was fine. Yeah. He goes to the edit and says, make, look, make <laughs> me look grum- grumpy and angry. To he's girl. such a nice man. Yeah. He's an incredibly nice man. So that's why I was teasing him. <laughs> he was embarrassed because his wife was in. That's what he right. said to me. But yeah. my wife was in. I didn't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I put him on the spot a bit. He's, he's a really so, nice and man. And now you've said you want to go on holiday with his <laughs> oh puppet. It's like I've got a crush, is not it? It is. I do have a bit of a crush. He's lovely. Yeah. So clever. He's such a smart man. Yeah. And he's nice. I, I have a bad story about Ian Hislop, sorry. Oh. I will try and get one. I bet Richard Bacon has. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go away with the Ian Hislop puppet. Also because he's small. Yeah. So if there was a problem, I'd say to the puppeteer, you've got to put your hand in my, you've got to go in my hand in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to talk about what happens in the pocket. It's weird, you know, but how many times have you been on holiday and there's been an emergency? I mean, that's the first thing you thought about. I'm a was sickly the, family. Are you? Yeah. I'd be thinking of the good times I could be having. <laughs> No, puppet. we were sickly. There's always like someone has an asthma attack or something. So you always got who's gonna? There's a need an emergency, yeah. and I'd, I'd want the puppeteers to be able to help. They wouldn't be able to. Well, they're dicks then. <laughs> well, it's just that's the argument. They've agreed to go on holiday with you. Yeah, but even in an emergency situation, they're not going to break their contract. Oh. <laughs> then they'd have to pay for the holiday if they do that <laughs> out of their own pocket. Is it a TV show? Are they being filmed? No, it's just you go on holiday <laughs> with a puppeteer and a voiceover artist and a puppet. Where do you think Ian Hislop would take me? I don't know. That's the part of the... Where the it's not he'd... the real Ian Hislop, it's the puppet of Ian Hislop. Oh. Well, what? That puppeteer might not have any money. Well, no, it all, it all gets paid for. Who's paying? <laughs> <laughs> are me. you paying? You're paying. paying. <laughs> I'm paying everyone. How much are you going to give us, budget-wise? 
whatever it takes, whatever the puppet decides, but the people <laughs> running the puppet. The moon. The pe- Ian Hissel wants to go to the I, moon. He wouldn't do that. And the How person, do you know? The, the puppeteer person, might. The puppeteer would know that, isn't it? And it's not the puppeteer who would make the decision, it's the voiceover artist. You just said it's the puppeteer, so the voiceover well, artist. Well, the voiceover artist would talk, would do the talking, the puppeteer can point at the moon. Didn't, um, or can get a map and go. <laughs> but the voiceover artist has Didn't to Steve Coogan used to do some of the voices on He Steve did, yeah, so you could go on holiday with Steve Coogan, but you wouldn't be able to talk to him with Steve Coogan. Oh my Which God, might be an advantage, that. might be an advantage with Steve being on holiday with Steve Coogan. And it he might can't. be the only way he'd be safe. He can't, um... <laughs> he's done this show, hasn't he? Yeah, he has done this show. Is he nice? Re- yeah, well, you know, he's... Uh, well, yeah. I've known him for a... <laughs> no, he is. I've oh, known him, answers. I've known him for a long time, and I always found him quite a difficult person to understand the real person when, mm. when I first met him. Yeah. And, I th- and I think he's really um, grown into himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, like a primary school teacher <laughs> yeah, report. That's, that's lovely. So, but Very I did, shy when he joined I the did, class. It was um, nice to see him again, and it felt like, oh, it felt really? like more of a, a, a regular person, not yeah. someone hiding behind his characters. Some voice. comics are so crazy and they're younger, aren't they? Yeah. And I feel like they do. I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to get in. You know, I think like you are, there is... You, if you're really fixated on comedy, yeah. I think it's, you know, you're not necessarily as great with the other stuff. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. It and does make uh, you odd. And you sort of, and you, and then when you're young, you're really focused on thinking, oh, I want to get to where I'm going to get yeah. to. Yeah. And then you get there and you go, oh, it wasn't, why, <laughs> wasn't what I imagined. Sarah and me always say, wherever you get to, you're still there with yourself. That's true. So if there's any, if there's any problems, if you were having, like, it doesn't make them go away. It's no. still you. So if you've been a dick, it's still yeah. you being a dick. Yeah, but all right. Like <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's really important that's to remember. True. It is. Like, it's still you. But, like, all your lot seem to be a your lot. lot. Your lot? What's my lot? All your lot. <laughs> you <laughs> women. No, all your... <laughs> <laughs> Bleeding everywhere. <laughs> your, your generation of comedians who are... There is a little gang of comedians like you and Sarah. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, and all that. But then there's a, you know, which is a tight-knit group, but you seem more sane. On Do the whole, think? I think than certainly the generation preceding mine and, and possibly my generation a bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I sometimes think it goes in waves. Like I sometimes think I do think uh, there's a certain yeah there's a certain definite group of like female comics that are very nice and we make a big. And there are some men in that group as well. Like oh yeah, 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 definitely. No, because you only made you said you women. Yeah, I know, yeah, <laughs> but that was a jo- that was making oh, a funny joke there. The patriarchy. It's hard to tell. Just the patriarchy those women from joking. the last week are in the front row again. <laughs> Uh, the people watching at home will know what I'm talking about. Aggressive women. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I love comedy so much, and I, and even I did want to be a serious actor. Like, I was always obsessed with comedy as a child. I sort of yeah. just, I never took it seriously because I just didn't. I didn't know you could do this bit. I knew stand up was a job. I didn't know like, not doing stand up was also possible to do yeah. comedy. I just there wasn't. Nobody told me that at school. So I think it took me so long to get here, and I had so, it was so, it was hard. I'm always just, I'm just happy to be here rather than... Yeah, well, that's good. But yeah. it, I think that's part of the reason it's much more... Like, it's like you have to make career decisions now. And yeah, you have to go, yeah. there's so much competition. Yeah. And there's, you know, you go to Edinburgh and it's 800 people rather than 50 people. Yeah, yeah. And so you've got to stand out And it somewhere. costs you, like, yeah. 10 grand to so do it. So you've got to want to do it to yeah. the extent that you might have 10, 15 years of living in poverty. Yeah. Uh, and so that means the people who come out the other end probably want to, are either crazy or <laughs> very driven. Yeah, there's <laughs> still crazy ones, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I don't know, I just think it just makes you much more, I had so many rejections for so long that when anyone, like, like the peep show thing, I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe it, it's so <laughs> amazing. Like, so I just think, oh, it's so nice, it's so good. Who knows what will happen next, but just enjoy this moment. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to go quite well, that is my, <laughs> that is my prediction. I, I think so. This is peak, yeah. this is peak. <laughs> This, this yeah, is, you, yeah. know, they, you won't do better than this, <laughs> no. than a slightly bamboozled audience at five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon looking at you. You have no going, idea who I am. What's going on? 4D they, they peep show, guys. They don't seem to know who I am. That's, <laughs> what, that's, that's the what I think they might have just come to see Stickman beforehand <laughs> and got confused. There's a lot of five-year-old children in the audience. We had that yesterday for ostentatious. We had lots of kids in. Yeah. And the title we got was Shag and Shagability. <laughs> <laughs> so straight away we were like, ah, oh, Lord Shag. <laughs> How are you? That's the only time we're going to reference it. His name is Lord Shag. That's all we need to do. Yeah, yeah it's like two, like two kids in the front row. Yeah. And when we said Shag and Shagability, they went, oh! <gasps> <laughs> it's very sweet but terrible. When I did my play Excavating Rita, in which I oh. was uh, I was naked part way through the show, yeah, I, was fu- I did a full frontal nude did scene you? that I wrote for myself. <laughs> 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 Who would write themselves? Well, <laughs> I, 
think when Why I'm right, when that? I'm a writer, I'm a, I didn't know I was definitely going to be playing the part, but also <laughs> as a writer, I thought I that's, think I could do it. Uh, that's something uh, that needs me to. That, as a writer, that's really important. But and when it came to me as an actor, I said to the director, "Yeah, I don't have to be completely naked." Though <laughs> the director said, "Yes, you do." Though I had my socks on, but I did it. I did it. The, I did it. There was it was great seating uh, in the oh, audience. Yeah. It was in the Pleasants above oh, yeah. or upstairs, oh, uh, know, yeah. and. Uh, there were like two eight-year-old girls sitting at my uh, cock level. Cock level, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was... What did that. you do? You just... Ca carry on. I'm a, I'm a professional, professional actor. Were they... I had an... When we were at school, we got taken to see the back eye and we oh, had yeah. to go like to Reading, which was like, like we had to get this train journey because we, we were studying it for this, but it was the only place in London doing it. So we all got sent there. And they did a 90s raver version of the back eye. <laughs> and so they were all on drugs. Because they talk about, in the back, they talk about ec the ecstasy a lot. Yeah, they uh, use that word. So they'd obviously gone... <laughs> <laughs> and um, the man, uh, Pentheus, oh my God, Pentheus in the story gets his head ripped off by his own mother because she's so high on this bacchanalian on fury. It's laugh a minute with me, guys. And um, he came out completely naked, the actor. Yeah. But it was like a sort of fringe production, like amateur dramatic. And it was like 10 girls doing this. So I, I didn't go to a girl's school. It was just only... And we all screamed. <laughs> and then we laughed for 20 minutes because we could we just couldn't get it together and we were literally like, going, <laughs> like shoulder, shoulders shaking weeping Hannah had to leave the room and they were st it was so I, now I feel so bad yeah. and afterwards we found out the director was sitting behind us and she was like shame on you it's theatre I don't know why you acted like that and we were like he was naked <laughs> and he was like because he was dancing around yeah. so it was sort of like it was more it was more like something from bottom than it was like from <laughs> so it was just like waggling it around it was so shocking yeah I would have reacted like that at your show well these girls were very impressed with this <laughs> 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 Check it out, ladies. They did not laugh one for one moment throughout the whole play. <laughs> they were so impressed they couldn't even laugh before that bit. I wish I'd have seen him. I mean, well, well, I would have screamed. I'll, go, I'll do it for you backstage. <laughs> uh, so, so I'll get my Christmas elf outfit. <laughs> we can do, we do that. Can do the both plays. That's what I was after. Uh, so, look, we're going to have to. Um, we're going to have to go and leave this now because we have to do another one in a minute. That's okay. Oh. I've waffled on. It's been. I've, it's really. I, you genuinely are one of my favourite actors and uh, improvisers, and it's great. Ha, what other improvisers do you know? Well, I know uh, Paul Merton <laughs> and Paul Merton. Uh, Josie Lawrence. Yep. And uh, Who else do you know, Rich? Know a lot of the ostentatious <laughs> guys. Uh, I know it was quite. A, I do set lists, which is an oh, improvised yeah, yeah. thing. So I've I'm done a, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I enjoyed that. It's yeah. terrifying. Really, I found it really scary. Well, yeah, but you're not. You don't really do stand up. No, I don't at all. So so that so they asked me to do it, and they said do it in character, and I was like, I can't. My characters don't. It's, they're like in their world, so I just did it as myself. I got drunk and did it as myself. Right. It was alright. Yeah, good. I'm sure. Well, you know, you're very. You know, you can improvise, can't you? I can. Yeah. I should learn to do that. So, um, this is the 99th episode of is this. It? Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. You've got 99 podcasts, but yeah, yeah right. fill in the rest. <laughs> uh, and then I've got a Richard Baker one. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Give a massive round of applause to Gary and Lloyd, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>